David, you want to take pictures? Oh. Okay. Seven when we were pledging. Okay, when we first pledged Sigma Tom, Steve Brooks and I think Mole was with us and Cochran. Al Yanaris. Yeah, and Al Yanaris. Well, uh, Mole, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But some people don't know by nickname. Yeah, well, yeah. So anyway, we go on. It's Cochran. Cochran. Yeah. On Old Color Road, they had those levees. You know, the levees were they would. They would take the bay, they would take the uh, water from the bay and they would filter it into the canal. Yeah. You know when they were low. Yeah. So one night we're drunk in the shed, and those things were those things were locked off. Well, we broke the lock off and we went up on the left. Here we are, drunk in the shed doing the Tarzan deals, right? right? And a little to be known, it was dark. We were all drunk. Well, the next day. I wake up and I go back and I look at where we were driving. There were rocks out. I mean, I don't know how the hell. Someone didn't, didn't crack, kill himself. It, it killed himself. And we were, and, and I mean, we were doing the damn Alcapoco split. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So if they if they had just been five feet in. It's been deader than Hank Williams. That's pretty dead. Way dark. Way That's dark. Cool. Way after the the fraternity thing had shut down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Good. Oh. So we're going down this dirt road and it's bouncing. Yeah. Out, yeah. In, the, out in the middle of the fields and yeah. Everglades and shit. Yeah. And it's bouncing and all of a sudden I can hear the damn battery go. Well, shit, man. I said, Adrian, the damn battery just fell out. I better turn around and go back and get it while the car's running, because if this son of a bitch turns off, we won't be able to crank it. I back up to turn around and go. Guess what? You know how they build those little ditches and shit around the roads? So there's a ditch there just wide enough for the, for the bumper of the Volkswagen to go over one side, and the wheels drop down in this ditch. And I'm, I'm high-wheeled or low-wheeled or whatever you want to call it. We're, we're, there's no way to pull it out. I mean, this is, we're just fucked. So we get out and we look around and we're just dark. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And Everglades. Oh yeah. So I decide that I see lights off in the distance on the horizon. I said, I'll head that way. Adrian, you stay here. I'll go get help. We'll get to a phone. Acre lives out here someplace. Did you have your pledge been on? No. <laughs> Matter of fact, I pulled off everything except my, like, my jeans. Did you have Because it's a little wet. Did you have your brick? No. Well, no, the fuck wonder you didn't get when you got ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there's a litany of things. But I take off down through the Everglades. And I'm, and I'm, I'm barefoot with jeans on, no shirt. And because it's wet. You know, I'm knee, I'm knee deep in water, but I'm headed for these lights. Oh. And I have no idea what amount of time went by. But sometime in the middle of this, I, I start to at least sober up enough to realize I'm in deep shit. Oh, yeah. Because I'm now up to my freaking <laughs> chest in water. There's nothing to hold on to but sawgrass. And I start thinking about gators and moccasins and all this shit. shit. And I'm going, I, I literally can remember yelling for help and realizing that there's nothing out here. Now, I kept going, and the flashes of memory were, first of all, I can remember coming to an area where the grass is cut nice. And there's a canal, and I swam a canal. You swam a canal. I went through a canal, and now I'm out on the other side, and the grass is nice and cut. <laughs> wet, soaking wet. Soaking wet. <laughs> well, guess what I see? That I finally get a recognition of where I am. The tail of a B-52. Oh. oh. Fuck, you were on the base. I was on the base. No, not on the base. Not on the base, on, on the, the flight, flight line. line. Oh, you motherfucker. I am standing here, and I'm seeing the B-52s lined up, and, like, back then, every third plane had a had a guy with a dog, right? You know, I mean, you had armed guards out there by the planes. And I go, this isn't good. So I better make sure they know I'm here. Uh. So I start yelling, hey, hey, I'm OK. I'm all right. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm drunk. I don't even know where they came from, but within a flash, I am on the ground. I got a boot behind my neck, and I got friggin' guns in my head. 
Well, it took them a couple of minutes to realize, but the air police finally realized, I'm just one drunk skunk kid. And I remember this black guy sitting there just laughing his ass off. Well, of course, now this is whatever it is, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Guess what? Base security hasn't just been broken. This guy's on the flight line security where they have nuclear loaded planes. So they call up the, the head of this, uh, you know, oh. captain of security. Take me down to the AP sack. I'm sitting in here like this. Sopping hey, wet. For me? Sopping wet. They, uh, no. they're over there talking. The APs and, the, and the, the captain and this colonel, they're over there talking. And I'd given them false names. Told them I lived in Key West and I was up here visiting a friend. And I got stuck and I got, because they were trying to figure out how I got there. And I couldn't tell them. <laughs> well, they're over there talking about this shit. I'm sitting in the in the AP station at, at Homestead Air Force Base, and I'm looking in front of me, like for me to you, is a screen door. They're over there. Time for me to go. Bam! I hit that door. I'm hauling ass. I know the base used to live on there. I can get out of here. Oh, okay. Well, as I turned the corner of the damn building, flower bed or something, my feet came out from under me, and I went down. By the time I get up and start to take another step, this guy just flying tackles my ass hammers me and they got me in there now they handcuff me and shit. Yeah. <laughs> they go over there and they talk for a while and I guess the real deal is is they didn't want this to show up on base security shit so they called Miami Dade pretty soon there's a couple of cops down there pick me up that's the last thing I remember until I wake up in a wheelchair <laughs> at Jackson at Jackson and I'm sitting here and there's this nurse asking me questions about drugs and I mean that there, there's none of that shit going on at all then, you know. And I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make some smart-ass answer, and about that time I hear some guy let me know that if I'm a smart-ass again, I got a lot more trouble coming. And I look up, and here's this big Miami Dade cop. All right, I get it. So I answer all the questions, and the next thing I know, I'm in jail. And I'm, I don't know how long it took. But I finally got a hold of Barney. <laughs> well, okay, okay, all right, go ahead. Because somewhere online, Adrian is still at Adrian? the car. Adrian was at the car. That's what I know. And I know I'm trying to get things done to get back. You're going the long way around doing it. Barney comes, Barney comes in and bails me out. And we take off, and I said, we got to go get Acre. Acre know how to find this place and pull my car out, and Adrian's out there. Go down to Homestead. What kind of time frame are we into now? A day and a half? Hours. Oh, like from maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when I got stuck to now it's probably 10 or 11 o'clock the next day. <laughs> and, and we go down there and get Acre, and we go and, and pull my car out, but Adrian's not there. And here's the, the, the uniqueness about Adrian. That was the last time I ever saw him. <laughs> I swear to God. I never saw him at enough party. Well, shit, Adrian was in drug rehab. Well, he that. might try following you in the Everglades. It, there could have been anything. I have no idea what the man did. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen Adrian since that day? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, I think oh, so. okay. Right. I mean, the last time I heard Adrian that was, was That's in, not when he just. Oh, no, the last okay, time right. I heard Adrian was in shooting up heroin. That's how bad he was. Yeah. yeah. All right, I got I've, one. Listen, I've heard right. 101 stories. Uh, oh, from, but I, I heard he was a Krishna. Uh, well, who so, walks a woman and we used to hang with at Sigma Tau? Ten pounds of titty in a loose buzz ear. A twat that wiggles like a moose's ear. These foolish things remind me of you. A pubic hair. My cereal bowl, the big fragrance of your big asshole. These foolish things remind me of you. Those canker scars make your face so blotchy. The way your eyes get when you blow my hachi. These foolish things remind me of you. Ejaculation on a feather bed. A sheer skin rubber with a purple head. These foolish things remind me of you. These foolish things remind me of you. I think it's pretty funny. It's true. 
I don't know what to say. I, 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 how, what, what, what possessed you to sit down and think that all those verses up? Well, I mean, when we used to have those pig parties, you know, that we used to have those famous pig parties. It reminds me of my day. Too. I'm out of here. When I was in the fraternity. <laughs> okay. It's still, you no, have to get, let's get, get to there. an era. I'll what era? 60s, 70s, 80s. I'll get there. Okay. All right, 60s, go ahead. I'm 70s, sorry. 80s. Jesus Christ, who are you talking to? Well, right. See, <laughs> this video can be uh, watched by anybody who doesn't know anything about the fraternity. So, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It go could? Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Outsiders. Or One night when Hillstrom and Jaycott and I lived in an apartment behind Arby's in South Miami. That would place it at 67, 68. Uh, we came home early in the evening and David was asleep. We found this to be very peculiar because that's not how we do things. So we remembered that the poor man had been to the dentist that day. Now David Hillstrom. Okay. And the Dennis had done some horrendous things to poor David, and he took some medication and he was sleeping it off. So we, perfect roommates that we were, set all the clocks back, or actually forward, to 6 a.m. or whenever Hillstrom was accustomed to waking up and going to work. So we set all the clocks back, this is about 10 o'clock at night, set them up to 6 a.m. We got in bed, turned out all the lights, pretended like we were asleep, and waited for the alarm to go off. Okay. Yes, this is an interview. <laughs> story. No, it's story time. Story time. You can listen in. You can listen in. Go ahead. Yeah. So, the alarm goes off. Hillstrom gets up in his drunken, doped up stupor from medication and goes in and prepares. Now, what, what time is it really at that point? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. He yeah. thinks it's 6 a.m. Yeah. Prepares a shower. And I there was one small detail. I don't remember what, remember what it was, but I jumped out of bed to fix this detail while he was in the bathroom, and he comes out, and he catches me like half stride. So I just <laughs> went back to bed. <laughs> and I asked him later, why didn't you realize that what was going on? He says, oh, you always do stupid shit like that in your sleep. So anyway, he goes back in the bathroom, brushes his teeth, shaves, takes a shower, gets all dolled up, comes out, shines his shoes, gets dressed for work, and just about to walk out the door at, you know, 10.30 p.m., <laughs> Jay Cotton and I could not hold it in one second longer. He hit the damn roof. He was madder than hell for two, three months. And years later, I felt bad about it. All right. All right. So go ahead. You're, you're, this is year what? This is uh, probably 1967 or early 8, I don't know. But I was during this uh, school year, 67 or 8, not sure. Well, what stands out in my mind is we had a uh, mixture with KO, sorority. And tri Kai came and raided that mixture. Now, where was this we had at? We stolen them. I had to, was it was at the KO Ranch or something out on Sunset. We uh, were out there in the Sunset. Some ranch area. out in Sunset. Yeah, I used to be a whole horse ranch out there. Uh -huh. We're out there and having this mixture, and uh, tri Kai comes in. Instead of us all fighting them, we, we, Dennis said, Well, I'll fight your guy, you fight me. And Dennis went out there and fought this guy, Booty Fada. And they got together and they, and they, I mean, it was a knockdown drag. These two guys were going at it. He was a little smaller than Dennis, but what a fight. Well, anyhow, Dennis wound up getting the best of him. We all broke up that, uh, there, went back to the fraternity house, and we were partying away with some music in the house, and Booty Fodder comes in a Volkswagen, shooting a gun in the air. Everybody's hitting the ground. And uh, he wants Dennis Corbett. He wants his ass. Him and Dennis are gonna get in a car and go out and, and fight. And uh, what happened was <laughs> Dennis just uh, said it. He bravely went out there and Jan Hawkins, I don't know, either valiantly or stupidly, knocked the guy's gun down and shot him and got shot in the leg, had to go to the hospital that night. And by that time, everybody in the whole fraternity was throwing rocks and he was like fishtailing out of the getaway area. To, so that stood out to me. I thought I was going to get shot. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay. What year, first off, what year are we talking about? Uh, this has got to be 1968. 
And this story is about the night Bill Ogle drank gasoline. Bill Ogle drinks gasoline story. Yes. And Bill Ogle is here to verify this story. And yes, he is. Okay, all right. So this has got to be a okay, true story. Okay, background yeah. information. Uh, at the time, uh, a number of guys were in the habit of buying these gallon jugs of lemonade and mixing vodka or rum in with them and just kind of drinking out of the jugs or whatever. So this particular night, one of our other esteemed brothers had decided he needed some gasoline siphoned out of a vehicle for other nefarious purposes, which I'm not allowed to comment on because yeah, he gets no. highly upset. Okay. Uh, so he siphoned some gas out of a car into one of these plastic jugs and was about to set out to do his deed when we, for some unknown reason, decided it would be best for us to intervene and prevent him from doing that. So we took the gasoline from him and laid it down, kind of keeping an eye on it. Now Ogle comes along. He hadn't been there when the rest of this had been taking place. And he thinks that the jug is full of vodka or rum and lemonade. And we tell him, Bill, no, it's not. It's gasoline. Well, he thought we were lying to him. We just didn't want to share our, our liquor with him. And we had to do that several times. He kept going over there, grabbing the jug, and we'd stop him. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Did anybody let him smell? Uh, no, no. That that would have made too. How old are, How old are you now at this point? Fifty-six. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. At the point of the story here. Oh, we're eighteen, nineteen, dude. And, uh, okay, so you're passing this, you're fighting over the bottle. Yeah, you know, we keep him away from it as best we can, and somehow we all got distracted, I guess, and Bill saw his chance, ran and grabbed the jug, got the cap off, and started chugging away. And he got several gulps down before he realized that it was gasoline. Now, the most interesting part of the whole story is what occurred afterwards. Because Bill became violently ill. And of course, we all thought it was rather amusing to see one of our brothers laying there in the dirt at the house on his side, puking. And he's so sick, he can't even you know, get out of his own puke. He kind of shuffles himself on his side and he'll puke some more and shuffle a little further. Now he just kind of made circles in the dirt there. <laughs> oh. Hey, you, wait a minute. Now, now, how many guys are watching this at this point? Uh, several. I don't several? remember yeah, who okay. all was there, yeah. but there were a right. number of But there were a there. bunch of people watching him do circles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, what, what are brothers for? And, and, and were they giggling? Of course we were oh, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit. Shit. I it was funny. Man, yeah. Yeah. And Ogle will back that up, right? Ogle got oh, a yeah. story. Okay. He got a story he wants to tell. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Yeah. That's okay. Well, first off, what year are we talking about? Uh, Sebring. Sebring. 19. 19. Now, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Why are you here? Why are you here? I have to verify a story. Preston, get over here quickly. I have to verify a story. Wait, wait, wait. Did you or did you not drink gasoline? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bill. That, yeah, thank and you. Did you, do, did you do circles? Three times. Did you do circles uh, in, the, in the dirt? Sorry about that. Circles in I the told dirt. you three times. I did. Yes, you did tell me, but I thought it was your vodka. Okay. No, no. Okay, the, so that story is verified. That story is okay. verified right. and true. Okay, so now okay. you're in Sebring, and the year I'm is? In Sebring, 1968. And, um, 68 is a big year for this fraternity, you know. And we got there, of course, you know, early afternoon. Rode up with Fisher, so there was beer drinking. Are we taping that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was beer drinking yeah. all afternoon, so uh, probably the chances are we were pretty well intoxicated. But we had set up the Sigma Tau camp, and so I was walking around just looking at people, and uh, I run into Keith Kent, who was my big brother. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
can you, can you briefly describe what setting up a Sinmata camp consists of? Yeah, it's a big fireplace and, and our car is around in a circle. It's, a, it, it's and, like uh, rounding up the, the wagons. Right, rounding okay. up the wagons. Okay, okay. okay. So, so what happened was uh, Keith goes, little brother, come here, come with me. I see, he goes, I want you to meet somebody. So we walked down the street and, uh, you know, across the grass and stuff. And when he walks into this other camp and it's a big U-Haul truck, there's like at least 30 guys on there. 25, 30 guys. And he looks at him and goes, hey, you guys gave me some shit earlier. He says, I, he says, I couldn't take you on by myself, but I got my little brother with me now. So anybody that wants to no, fight us, this, come on down. This is Keith Kent. Keith Kent. And you're standing next to him. I'm standing next to him. Looking up at a U-Haul truck with, with 30. 25 guys, 30 guys sitting and, in it and on it and around it. And they're, they're 20 years old or more. Right, well, same age as us, uh, okay. young guys. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Because we were young then. Okay. So How old were we? We were 20. 20. 20. Okay. So I look at him and go, what are you doing? <laughs> and he goes, just stay with me, brother. And <laughs> at least out of 30, probably only 28 climbed down to fight us. So he says, all right, he says, I'm going to be the one. He says, I'll fight you all one by one. He says, my little brother will just keep it fair. So he starts fighting this guy. And it only took about like a minute before these other guys start kicking him. You know, so I'm punching them and pushing them. They turn around. Some guy hit me. He hit me so hard, I took a fence down. And I'm looking, and I, I'm bleeding, and I see blood, and I'm going, oh, I cut that sucker. And then I'm going like, well, wait a minute, man. I didn't even hit anybody. So Keith goes, run, little brother, run. So I took off running to our camp, which was just like about 100 yards away. I told everybody they were killing Keith. So we had about 50 guys, so we all went down there. They killed him. We burnt their truck. They ripped, wrecked the, like the, wrecked the U-Haul truck and, uh, huh? and burned it up. I like the way you were. Wow. Yeah, it was good the times. Good times. Yeah. Good times. All right. He had uh, a, a cousin come in from North Carolina. Charlotte. And we wanted to show him a good time. She was from Charlotte, North Carolina. And she came down with a couple of her girlfriends. So we were going to show him a good time. Yeah. And and it, all right. And the so Cadillac, Cadillac and convertible? No. 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 Okay. Like a, okay. So we took him out. We went around the grove. We were hitting all these hot spots. Yeah. Yeah. And this girl named Marilyn, she was, I mean, I immediately was attracted now, to her. Okay. Now, remember, this is a family video, so, you know, don't right. get too, yeah. you know. Oh, and no. so okay, I, yeah. I was immediately yeah. attracted yeah. to her. Uh -huh. Okay. So we went out and spent a lot of night running around town, doing all this stuff. Well, towards the end of the night, I'm in the back seat with Marilyn. And I'm just making out with her like crazy. All right. And I'm grabbing the All right. parts of her body. She's All got a beautiful body. All right. And I'm going crazy. So at the end of the night, we drop them back off at their apartment. I give her a big kiss. We we go back home the next morning. I call Jeff and I said, Jeff, we got to find out how I can get in touch with, with uh, Marilyn because I'm ready to move to Charlotte, North Carolina because I want to be with her. Okay. She's, this is the, you know, yeah. I fell in love. He's, he's All right. Okay. 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 1969. You're how old? Personality. I'm um, 19 years old. About 19, 20. 20 years old. Okay. And uh, and Jeff says I got was something. Was this your can... first kissing episode, or no, no, have you, you, have you been experienced to, uh, college, to this I've, point? I've met okay. some girls. Oh, and I've so had you, some you've been around at this point. This wasn't, oh, a, yeah. this wasn't this wasn't the been, first girl no, you kissed. No, no, okay. No, no. I've had a right. wonderful time. But well, we need to verify this. This was special. Okay. And Jeff calls me up. I mean, I called Jeff and I told him. You called Jeff and women. Did you call her? I didn't know her number. Okay. She, so she, she was, was on her way back Jeff. to Charlotte. She was okay. going back to Charlotte. Okay, so this is a fraternity. Okay. You so I to, called yeah, Jeff yeah, and I said, yeah. Jeff, we need to find out where she is. I need to. I want to go to Charlotte. I want to be with her. Jeff says, Bob, I got something I need to tell you. And I said, well, I just want to find out how to keep in touch with her and how to go hang out with her. He says, Bob, I got it. I said, I don't care, Jeff. Well, Jeff finally had to tell me that Marilyn wasn't a Marilyn. Marilyn was a Manfred or something like this. And I found out that this girl was a guy. It was a transvestite. Yeah. But had she, a sex change. She had a sex change in everything. She was. Now, a, Jeff, I got to ask, did you know this all along? Why he didn't no, see, I did make not. it out? I didn't know until my friend Van told me that morning, you know, and I was shocked. This is 65. Wow. This goes back. Wow. Okay. This goes back to high school. Keith Kent. A little story about Keith Kent. Well, this is supposed to be a fraternity. Uh -huh. Well, nope.
No, nope. fraternity stories only from the entirety now. I have to know the beginning, the middle, and the end. You want some more time? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to regroup. So, um, first off, what year are we talking about? Um. Well, I've got a couple guys. Okay. Yeah. Probably would be um, 1968. Okay. And um, remember when we used to rent the uh, Orion Community Center? Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you remember who used to get for police for uh, chaperone? Motorcycle mm. cop. Okay. John Travis? No. He's one of the meanest SOBs in the world. Okay. As far as when he was on duty. Okay. However, when he used to work our gig, yeah. he used to drink. So he was a great guy because he would protect us, keep all the assholes from coming in and, and trying to start fights. But the famous memory with uh, Travis was the night after he had been our party and he had been drinking a lot. Remember how the uh, how South Dixie Highway was split, split. there at, uh, you know? Yeah, there's a gas so station right there just about to split. So one way head south, one yeah. way head north. Yeah. He got on his motorcycle and went over and headed. Uh oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Uh oh. On his motorcycle. So that was a good memory. Yeah, but now nothing happened, right? Nothing happened. 